Grade 5 Math, number 11.10, using volume formulas. Everyday people use formulas to do math. Did you know that miles per hour is a formula? People say miles per hour every day. It's how many miles you go in an hour. That's a formula. We can use a formula to find the volume of a rectangular prism. So remember, a cubic unit is one unit that is either centimeters, inches, feet, or yards in all directions. In length, width, and height, it's that same measurement. And if we had eight cubic units, that would be the volume. And to measure the space, the volume inside something, we find how many cubes fit in it. Okay? Quick little review. So, we can use length, width, and height to find volume. The volume formula is length times width times height. It's also seen as V equals L times W times H. So if we had a box like this orange box that was five feet across, four feet back, and three feet high, we could group the five and the four together because that would be the area numbers for the flat bottom. Five times four is 20 times three. 20 times three would be 60. You make sure you put the inches in and you put whether it's cubed. See? Is it centimeters cubed, inches cubed? It's very, very important that you label them, okay? So, that's grouping together the base area, okay? We could also use the base area and the height to find the volume. A volume formula is also V equals B times H. Volume equals base times height, and the base area is the length times the width. So it's almost like the first part of it's done, see? If we had this green box that was seven centimeters long, for the length, five centimeters for the width, and two centimeters for the height. We could do the seven times five, which is 35. That gives us two centimeter things here. See, one, two. So we square them. It's 35 centimeters squared because we found the area. And then we'd multiply that by the two, the height, and we'd get 35 times two, which is 70 centimeters cubed. This is wrong. Okay, it's a three. Sorry about that. It's 70 centimeters cubed. See, we got two centimeters there and one centimeter there. That makes three because you can add exponents, all right? So, if we had this big pink box that was nine inches for length, four inches for width, and five inches for height, we could just do a little math on the side and do nine times four, which is 36, and multiply that by the five, Six times five is 30, we carry the three, put the zero down. Five times three is 15, and the three is 18. We get 180 inches cubed. We pay attention to the fact that it's inches, and we make sure we put our little three up there to show that we're doing volume, okay? If you didn't put anything, it might look like it's a long line that was 180 inches long, like a ribbon. It's not telling anyone that it's volume, but by putting the inches cubed, it's telling everyone it's volume. Now, sometimes in your homework or in your math, you'll see something that says find the missing measurement. So, it'll have the total volume already, but then you need to find the missing measure. So, it would say the length times the width and then a question mark, or the length and a question mark, and it would give you the width. Well, you know you need to multiply two of them together and then multiply the third one together to get the answer. And we know that division is the opposite of multiplication. So this is an easy one. For 90, we've got 10 times 3, which is 30. What does 30 need to be 90? It needs to be multiplied by 3. That was an easy one. We could have even done it in our head. But what if it was numbers that were hard? We could take this number, and we could divide to find the answer. See? We can actually use 30 as the divisor and 90 as the dividend and say how many times does 30 go into 90? It goes in three times. See? So that helps us. All right? So that is how we can use formulas to find volume. We've got V equals L times W times H or V equals B times H. All right? 
We're almost through with fifth grade math. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.